As you know, exports to the UK sank by 40% in January, but the health crisis has camouflaged part of the negative consequences of the divorce. The first three months of, of the flesh and blood Brexit, if you want to call it like this, once the transition period ended on December 31st, have been a trail of unpleasant surprises, unfortunate anecdotes, and above all, the announcement of a time of uncertainty. The scorch of the pandemic, which hit the UK harder than anywhere else on the continent, just as the moment of disengagement came, has helped spread a cloak of pessimism. The rupture has exacerbated the pandemic crisis. The consequences of the divorce are there, but they will emerge with more force in the coming quarters. Exports to the UK uh, to the EU fell by drastic 40% last January, as I said, and the worst figure in two decades that is, and freight traffic between the two shores suffered a sudden drop. But part of the reasons had to do with a stockpile of inventory from many companies the need to take the time to understand and adapt to the new, only new to the UK, not new generally, customs paperwork, and the hibernation suffered by British shops, bars and restaurants during the strict lockdown that it started in mid-December and lasts today. It will still be a while until we get a clear idea of the effect of Brexit on our business, explains um, Daniel Giulio, originally from Las Palmas de Gran Canaria, He's 50 years old and has spent half his life in the UK. In 2004, together with another partner, he founded KBRH Catering Equipment, a company dedicated to the import and export of catering supplies. Last year, its business volume reached 1.2 million pounds, that's 1.4 million euros. And he already has a handful of problems to tell. Some dismiss them as specific but that's why I always bring up these examples from real life and from from practical real life. Um, because if you just look at one or two of them, you can just say there's single cases. It's just something specific. And trust that time will fix them. But this is not a single case and it's not a specific case. As you will know if you watched my videos, there's more than than a thousand videos of me already. The bar cards, a luxury product minority, but from which to make a good profit that you buy from a Spanish manufacturer took four or five days to reach the United Kingdom. The last sale which I commissioned to do in mid-December, he said, it came a month and a half later, at the end of January. Customs procedures, doubts from carriers and traffic stoppages have been constant during the first weeks of Brexit. More worrisome, however, are the fixed tariff expenses that many entrepreneurs will have to start living with. Julio imports cutlery made by an Austrian company, which in turn buys the material from a Chinese manufacturer. Before Brexit, import duties from outside the EU were a single payment. But with the new not new rules of origin regulations established in the trade agreement signed between London and Brussels, any product whose composition exceeds 40% of non-EU origin must be paid again when arriving on the island. Uh, Just said 40%, that's just one example. There's a whole list of different numbers um, for different goods, different parts and so on. So it's just one generalization here because you really have to differentiate whatever the good is that is it can go up to 65%. But the Austrian company pays and Julio also pays to import those knives or forks and spoons. For now, Brexit is taking its toll on every specific sector, such as carriers who return to their countries from the UK with empty trucks. Despite peering over the cliff several times, neither Brussels nor London ended up falling. But having skirted the cliff so much already has a price. The European Commission estimated that the pre-departure cost for the United Kingdom was between 1.7 and 2.9% of GDP. And according to a report by the think tank Center for European Reform, the CER, exports were um, to fall by 10% in the hectic period between the 2016 referendum and the end of the transition period. The coup, therefore, was already behind us. The European partners and the British government reached an agreement by which both parties undertook 
to keep their exchanges of goods free of tariffs and quotas. Even so, the exit had an impact on business activity. According to the Office for National Statistics, the ONS, sales of British products to the EU plunged in January by 40.7% compared to December to 8.1 billion pounds sterling, that's almost 9.5 billion euros, while 28.8 less was imported from the 27. Community sources, however, asked to be cautious with the little data available so far. Bureaucratic problems at the border are obvious, they add, but we can wait for more data to become available. Despite the fact that this is the biggest setback in the historical series, whose beginning dates back to 1997, the data may be clouded by the restrictions imposed by London due to the pandemic and by the possible anticipation of purchases in the months before the expiration of the transitional period. The CR analysis tries to extract the effect of these two elements by seeing how other similar economies performed. And the conclusion is that the UK is acted from the single market and the customs union led to a 22% drop in exports. The turmoil also affected financial markets. According to the British newspaper Financial Times, this month the holders of shares in some 50 Irish companies have moved their assets, valued at around 100 billion euros. From London to Brussels, of course. However, financial assets, especially derivatives, are protected by the temporary equivalency system that will be in force until June 2022. Brussels does work to reduce dependence on the United Kingdom. Neither does fishing, another sensitive sector, still notice the consequences. Diplomatic sources explain that the EU hopes to close an agreement with the UK on fishing possibilities between the two parties shortly. For now, the EU has decided to extend its quotas until July. One of the sectors that has plummeted the most this year is passenger transport, although this drop is mainly due to the closure imposed by London and uh, several other capitals. The sector that is noticing it the most is that of transporters, uh, transporters especially the Spanish. They took their goods to the UK and returned with merchandise from that country or from other EU states that they crossed, especially France. This last option was the majority. Now many carriers give up returning loaded from the UK to avoid the formalities. And in addition, they cannot carry out cabotage operations on their return. That, according to these sources, is substantially increasing transport costs. And we will be dealing with those costs forever. Um, there will be no change. They can renegotiate whatever they want. One thing will not change. The fact that the UK is now a third country. So the benefits of membership for the members and for the UK, um, for the members regarding the UK and for the UK in its trade with the rest of the EU, will not come back if the EU would do this, that that would be the end of the EU. I'm still reading in the comments, uh, by the way, every day that it, the EU will be over soon. My whole life, I heard that especially from England. The EU will be over next year. The EU will be done by Christmas. I heard that a lot last year, especially. And surprise, the EU is still there. And uh, that won't happen. They need reform. They will have to work on this. What you can see on my Europe channel, if you ever um, had a look at it, is what is really happening in the EU, starting with the German presidency, followed up by the Portuguese presidency, and it will continue with the Slovenian presidency. A lot of things are taken care of now that one really disturbing factor is not there anymore in the EU. And there's a lot happening in case of social data protection, um, economy. And every week you have really good new decisions in the EU. But nobody sees them because almost nobody is trying to get uh, informed. That's why I do this on the European channel. Um, I'm bringing something from, from the Portuguese presidency at the moment every morning um, and I see how many people watch that. I know 
not too many care. But that's the problem with the whole thing. No, People are speculating a lot. People are talking about the EU a lot, but don't know zilch because they never inform themselves. And um, maybe you didn't have the chance, you didn't know about that channel. If you really want to get information on what is going on right now in the EU, have a look there. And of course, you can use any other official source, but uh, or any official source. I'm not saying I'm an official source. I'm not. I'm just a personal one with interest in politics. But um, there you can get information. The information is out there. But too few people try to get it. And I suggest more people should do that than they would understand what the EU means, what the issues are, what the chances are, and what has to be done and what is being done at the moment. And if you want to stay informed about the UK and Brexit, of course, please subscribe to my channel. Visit my other channels. I'll see you in my next video. Auf Wiedersehen.